the used dropped a deluxe record slash standalone album slash B sides meds with a Z with yeah. a Z. Yeah. Um, I thought this was fucking incredible. Firstly, um, I have grown attached to these songs faster than I grew attached to the last tracks, the original album, the 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 album that these B sides came from, mm. which fair does not say a lot considering. I haven't respectfully I have not revisited that album since it came out because nothing really struck me. I think when they released I think it was People or Vomit was mm-hmm. the one that they released before they started the rollout. We were both like, holy shit, this is gonna be fucking crazy. And then they said, Oh yeah, that's not on the album, by the way. So finally to see People or Vomit having a little home on an album is incredible. I think just the I was Damn, I was going to say just the, the three track runs, then I saw four and five and six. It's a great fucking album. It's all fucking hits. Fuck You is incredible. People Are Vomit is incredible. As I just said, we both fucking loved that one. Title track is great. Um, Honestly, fucking damn, all of them are great. I love The Used. Even though I don't listen to them, they're not in my rotation. I still have that respect and um, fuck, what is it called? Um... They're just they're very the nostalgia for them. Um, because fucking Bert's vocals are just so they hold the power of just that era of music for me. So I hear his voice and immediately I'm like, Yeah, okay, it's the two thousands again, isn't it, Bert? <laughs> huh, huh. Great record. B sides were awesome. I do prefer this record over the original, which is so it's usually like a fifty fifty shot when we say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my that's my take. Yeah, I'm in a similar boat as you. Um, I thought Toxic Positivity was a great record, <clears throat> but mm-hmm. not something yeah. that I've really came back to since then. Didn't attach to it like I did Heartwork, which that Heartwork. record that yeah Ooh. that record just blew me away. That but it great. also came out in that <clears throat> that time at the start of the pandemic where like there was a shitload of free time, mm-hmm. and I was really able to digest the music that was coming out. So that's certainly part of it, but. Um, I'm gravitating towards the B-sides from the Toxic Positivity sessions faster than that record. Um, Yeah. I think it says something about the songwriting. Mm -hmm. When two of the B-sides were put out as singles ahead of the record Mm -hmm. in promotion of the support tour they were going on before the record came out. I think that says something about how good the songs those songs are and quite frankly the songs just from that session entirely were that two b-sides were out before a single single song from the record was put out it's fucking ridiculous it's i wish this was toxic positivity yeah genuinely like i wish they just flip-flopped it i would have been so much happier and it just it makes more sense because why the fuck would you put out two songs before an album rollout that are no correlation except for b-sides like if anybody has any fucking idea why that happened please let us know because I, that confuses me to this day um so curious yeah but fuck you and people are vomit are the songs that were singles ahead of mm-hmm. time and then meds was uh the single yes. you know when they announced that this was coming out um mm-hmm. people are vomit is probably one of my favorite used songs hand down hands down that fucking song is crazy um, absolutely yes yeah that that song's fucking awesome um uh depression personified and terrified are my two other favorites off of this record um but overall mm-hmm. just fucking awesome um and you know certainly interesting that uh that this is that these are the b-sides but i'm not going to complain because they're finally here we got to hear them fuck you and people are vomit are on a record and hey man more the use is usually not a bad thing so i can't complain about a whole ass second record a year after the last one came out even if it's technically not a full record it's it's nine tracks. That's an album. Yeah. That's a fucking album. Come on. And it has a whole new name. It's yeah. like they're not even trying. Come on. Yeah, they're, it's a record. They're marketing it as, you know, B-sides. Mm-hmm. But 
it starts for me it starts to become a full record when it's 10 songs and it's got its own name yeah <laughs> it's almost there it's yeah. it's missing one song <laughs> so let's go on for toss one track on there so yeah overall i enjoyed it i'm very excited to see them in a couple of weeks the set list mm. is fucking crazy mm. um and that will be my first time officially seeing the used headline uh, every time I've seen them, they've either been a festival headliner, um, co-headliner. a co-headliner, or direct support. Um, and this will now be my third time seeing them on um, the Stone Pony Summer Stage. And they've yeah. went from supporting to co-headlining, and now they're headlining. It's about time. We're finally getting there. Um, finally. I mean, 20 years in. Yep. We made it, guys. Yes, sir. That's fucking ridiculous. They should have. They. Well, it's, I'm happy. I mean, it's better late than never. Yeah, and it's it's a big room. Um, it's five thousand people. So, mm. um, you know, but it's just uh, I, I've seen them there a bunch now. Um, mm-hmm. but I still I still remain cautiously optimistic because when I saw them open for Rise Against, I almost swore to never see them again and then they were fantastic with pierce the veil but the set was cut short so i'm hoping that uh bert does not let the intrusive thoughts win too many times and that the show goes on because it is 20 songs long and i'd like to hear all 20 songs yeah come on bert come on bert you can yap another time man (laughs) (laughs) yap but make sure like let's get the songs going you know (laughs) exactly like like 20 seconds in between songs that's what i give you 10 10 